What's going on guys, it's Bromley and I wanted to uh, cover, we're rolling on covering some of the best of this Reddit AMA I did on the Weight Room subreddit on uh, Wednesday. I uh, had a blast, it was a lot of fun. I spent a lot of time on it, but it went quick. I tried to be as thorough as I could with the questions. A lot of them merited a little more time and discussion and I wanted to share them with you guys anyway. So uh, this was just too good of content to like pass up. So we're gonna go over some of the questions and the answers real quick guys. Stay tuned for the forum. I know I haven't mentioned the forum in a while. I plan on overhauling it. I'm trying to juggle these different platforms together and I still see myself as kind of new to this. So uh, things are starting to come together. The, the daily videos are going great. Now I'm focused on some bigger projects for Patreon. We have exclusive content there and I have some bigger videos I'm preparing for that. And I'm planning on overhauling the forum so we can kind of get all of these bases checked off. So stay tuned for that. So for this, Kev and Bev asked, in terms of learning programming, is there a sequence you suggest to learn about the variations? And then he asked about specific resources and books. Now, this, I'm assuming what he meant is the variations in programming. A sequence you suggest to learn about the variations in programming. And this is an interesting question because I've actually thought about this when it comes to, to putting out books and publications because I like talking about, discussing, writing about different styles of programming mainly because I wanna to try to build a common thread between them to understand, to get people to understand that they're not distinctly different. There might be flavors of training that are different. They take a different approach or they emphasize a different thing, but they all have the same things at play. It's just of all the dials you can turn to get this predictable response, all of the dials are being turned kind of in some program, but some just emphasize one over the other. I mean, that's the way that I think about it. So I thought about, whether or not it's a good idea to recommend that people take some time early on and experiment with different programs. That could, and that's essentially what I did, and I feel like what gave me a lot of insight that I have today, and I've grown on a lot of different programs, and that puts a lot of tools in my belt when it comes to being adaptable and changing based on the needs of my training, which I have to do all the time with Strongman. So it was absolutely beneficial, but at the same time, you're not gonna get a world champion who switches to a different flavor of programming every six or eight weeks. So it brings up this, this conundrum. Should I specialize? Should I find one method of training, figure out how to make it work, run it for the rest of my life? Or should I have fun, experiment, move back and forth? So this is kind of a thought experiment. If I was going to lay out the, the tour guide, you know, it takes people through like the smorgasbord of, of different restaurants, the order that you want to taste, the cuisine in this you know very diverse area, you know the best restaurants they have to offer. This is the order you would do it in. This is going to kind of be my tour guide for programming, starting at you know new, more beginner, the first things you want to expose yourself to, to the things that are a little bit more advanced, uh, and they kind of build off each other as you get more complexity. You start to incorporate different variables, and you have a little bit more to go off of having started with something simple first. So this is my thought experiment. I'm not recommending you guys actually do this, but this is the order in a perfect world I would have somebody go through. So the first thing we get into would be a high frequency linear progression. Assuming you're new, you're a novice, we want things simple and we want to take advantage of the fact that you are a novice, which means you recover faster. You can do more work. You'll set PRs workout to workout for a long period of time. And that's why starting strength is the way it is. Three days a week of squatting, literally add five pounds every single time you squat and you'll do that for months on end. That's what a lot of people's experience has been when they're new. As you get stronger, you can't do that anymore because each hard effort takes more out of you because you're closer to this theoretical red line. So yeah, so novices can benefit from high frequency um, and it's also simple. We're literally just controlling for weight. It's a linear progression. Weight progresses linearly indefinitely. So that gets you to connect what you do today with what you're doing next week. It gets you to understand how progress builds from workout to workout. Uh, and it teaches you to delay gratification, look forward to progress, and not just jump to the heaviest possible weight you can lift. So that's getting your foot in the water. That's your introduction to what programming actually is. It's the simplest variation, the one that's most appropriate for novices or works the best specifically for novices, and it creates a good launching pad. Beyond that, you're going to start introducing extra layers of complexity. Some of them are just going to be adding variables that you can now handle because you have a grasp on the other stuff, and now you can play with new stuff. Uh, some of it's gonna to be to address the fact that you're eventually no longer going to be a novice and you can't sustain growth that way. So the Grayskull LP is a favorite of mine. It's very starting strength-ish, 
The frequency is a little bit different. It's really a few sets of five, the last set's a plus set. That's the big difference. The last set goes to failure. So now you get those five pound increments. So volume does consistently and evenly go up, but you're also getting the benefit of a high effort set. And that's where you start to use effort as a driving force of progress, which is just as valuable. You wanna learn how to manipulate volume and intensity and all that, but effort is a very valuable driving force of progress. You wanna learn how that incorporates into it. And that will start to, you know, that's an extra element of stress. So that can keep you going when starting strength gets stagnant. Um, the rep ranges, it's a new threshold. So there's some new stuff going on there. Big fan of Grace P. I've actually used it and modified it well into my intermediate stages. Texas method is another one that's like a tick above starting strength. Now it's three days a week of squatting, but there's like a heavy, medium, light day. And that allows you to recover more because not every workout is the hardest workout of the week. So that allows you to get a similar amount of volume and practice in uh, while still allowing for recovery, which is important as you get stronger. So again, extra layer of complexity. Now you're undulating throughout the week for the purposes of recovery. Very important lesson to learn. Uh, and 531, I would put in that group as well. Harder singular efforts, three week waves. It's low frequency, so you're doing more accessory. It's not like you're doing all lifts in the same day upper body day, lower body day, you're, you're doing all your upper body work in one day. So fatigue will be higher, harder, singular efforts. You know, the whole workout, you know, your press day is a hard upper body workout. Three week waves to accommodate recovery. So it's not linear week to week. It's kind of light, kind of medium, kind of heavy, reset a little bit heavier. And then that's another forever program that you can run by making five pound jumps every cycle. And it works really well. It fits what intermediates need. And it introduces you to an extra layer of complexity in your programming, which is those three week buildups followed by dropping back and building back up, which I am a big fan of. So those are kind of the simple beginner bridging into intermediate programs that I really like. The next step beyond that is now where we start to get into actual periodization. So I've heard the ones I just talked about called forever programs. Anything that just says, do this scheme for a period of time, repeat with five pounds more. You can do that indefinitely until you just hit that brick wall. Periodization implies that you're you're having, you're starting with a deadline. You have a start and an end, and we're organizing training within that time frame. And that's really what periodization is. It's training organization, but there's a little more context of, of pre-planning a set period of time and organizing training within that, that period. Uh, so that's a logical move. Um, I would start with really simple stuff, which are like what the Americans did, how they first interpreted Soviet periodization protocols. So Fred Hatfield, Ned Cohen back in the 80s did a lot of stuff with this. And that's where I mean starting at five sets of 10, working down very, very smoothly all the way to a few sets of three, two or one reps. And it's very, very straight line. It works and there's a way to make it work and you can massage it a little bit as you figure out what your rate of adaptation is from start to finish. Is it perfect? No. And don't get caught in the trap of thinking because it looks smooth and even on paper, you know, the graph of volume and intensity are two straight lines. It's like an X. There's nothing really magical about that. The fact is we kind of grow in spite of that rigid structure, not necessarily because of it. Soviets did some things down the road where they completely decoupled volume and intensity. So over a long period of time, that change happened, but it was anything but smooth. And they found that it was just as good, if not better, because recovery isn't purely linear like that. So we don't adapt in that purely uh, linear capacity. That's neither here nor there. You start with it because it's simple. And then you get a sense of what doing tens and eights is like for a lot of sets, what the strength transition phase is like when you're doing, you know, fours, five, sixes, and then what the heaviest phase is and what it feels like to have done all that volume early on and then eventually end up, you know, a couple months down the road. Now you're finally doing triples. You're finally doing doubles and you see how you adapt given that base that you built. So that starts to set the groundwork for what organization looks like in a periodized scheme. Now I like juggernaut as kind of a bridge because juggernaut is a very linear program, but it's, uh, it's like if you take a step back and it's a straight line and then you get close and you see these teeth, the waves. So it's a little jagged when you get up close. It's three week waves and each one, we're generally in block training. You have accumulation, transmutation, realization. It's just three phases of training. It's essentially like volume, intensity, and peaking. It kind of, it's a very similar pattern. A lot of different words for very similar phases of training across all these different schools of thought. Um, but Chad Smith, broke it up into just three weeks instead of multiple weeks in these longer blocks where week one is accumulation, week two is transmutation, week three is realization, and he does it in the same rep scheme. So you'll have three weeks of tens, five sets of 10, three sets of 10, one set of 10. 
and they're separated by pretty big margin of, of percentage or big jumps, pretty big jumps that go week to week. Then you reset into your eights and you do the same thing. Five sets of eight, three sets of eight, one set of eight. It shows a little twist to the training where you're working in the same rep threshold, but the amount of volume and the amount of weight you're using changes pretty dramatically within those three weeks. But the whole thing is still very linear. So it shows you what other elements of complexity you can add to it while still maintaining the integrity of the training structure. So you're still starting with tens and ending with these three week waves of like doubles and singles. So the journey is very similar. It just has this extra this extra feature to it. So then you learn how to work week to week. Okay, I have these light sets of 10. Well, that doesn't feel like anything, but I did a lot of sets. Next week, you go a little heavier. Now three sets is something substantial. Oh, okay, that hits a little different. And then week three is just one all, all out set of 10 or more. And you're like, oh, wow, that sucked. So it kind of controls for effort. It, it definitely controls for volume and intensity. And then you reset with more volume and that's a pattern you run in those three week waves. But what it does is it maintains the integrity of that linear periodization scheme while sliding you forward uh, into something that has a block element to it. Because now we're looking at these three week chunks, these three week blocks. Now block training specifically, uh, it has a context or a history of hyper-focusing on specific qualities. So for athletic training, they'll get deep into energy systems and and what specific physical traits you're trying to adapt for. It's not as one dimensional as powerlifting is. But when I say block, I really mean just taking time to focus on one quality threshold, skill, whatever. And then we move forward logically into different blocks. So Juggernaut starts to get your toe in the water when it comes to that. Moving into tr a true block approach, I don't wanna try to define the boundaries of when something is or isn't block periodization. But in general, I think of it as being, you're spending three, four weeks or so focusing on one training threshold, a more narrow band of percentages, uh, a specific rep range, specific movements and accessories. And then once you wrap that up, you take the stress and the adaptation you got from there and you make a quantum leap into a new threshold. So it's more segmented, it's more compartmentalized, it's not as evenly flowing upwards in this nice, neat, even fashion. It's more you hang out here, you grow, and then you make a quantum leap, change the exercise a little bit, grow. And there's a million different ways to incorporate it. But really, you just want to get good at learning how to focus on one quality for four weeks or so, and then jump into something else and use what you did in the first block to help you out with the second block. That's the element of block periodization that is important. And then eventually after that, that's when I would use more high frequency methods because you have to get a little more elaborate as a more advanced lifter with high frequency than you do as a novice. With a novice, you can do high frequency and just add weight literally every single time. When you're advanced, you have to change the stressors. You have to allow for light days or recovery days. You have to make sure you know what the volume's doing week to week. Uh, you have to be able to predict when you're gonna get run ragged, when you're gonna need to back off. And having done all this stuff first will give you a lot of insight into that. Uh, instead of just jumping in like, oh, DUP, studies show give you know X percent more gains. I need to do all DUP. If you do it, you wanna do it right. And it requires some nuance and some, some context to it. Now, this certainly doesn't describe all the different flavors of training, but there's kind of a nice, neat thread of logic from where we started with the LPs, going through the linear periodization all the way to block and then higher frequency stuff that might be a little bit more concurrent. Um, and that's that's really what I think is important. Now remember, there is no bonus points for doing all the programs. It's not like anybody's gonna give you a, a punch card, you're gonna get a free smoothie. You wanna make sure that you're actually learning something. And more importantly, that you're actually growing. The point of getting a handle on these is to grow. So if you're just going down the tourist map and you're not really noticing progress, you're doing something wrong and you're not gonna get a lot of insight. Insight only comes when you do this stuff in a way that works, so remember that. Um, but hopefully that connected some dots and how these are all connected and which ones are gonna be more appropriate for which people, depending on their experience. So uh, any questions, agreement, disagreement, leave it in the comment box. Thanks for watching guys. Till next time, this is Bromley, I'll see you.